Hello and welcome to an analysis bar by bar of the uh, Debussy Premier Rhapsody. Uh, my name is Cathy Williams De Vries from Brisbane, Australia, and uh, you'll be joining me uh, in this video as I look uh, bar by bar, phrase by phrase, through this absolutely amazing piece. Um, there's something, there's a, there's uh, something that uh, is uh, poses difficulty to almost every aspect of clarinet technique in this piece. Um, starting from um, your piano throat tones, which can be greatly enhanced by covered fingerings, uh, through to various technical difficulties. Um, I'm talking of uh, the very rapid um, ascending arpeggios through uh, um, between uh, 45 and 51. Um, to around about 75 where uh, you're up in the altissimo register on a P double P. Um, the, the very very long phrases, uh, you've got some uh, uh, left hand uh, work um, around about 115 through to 120 um, and then you've got the very virtuosic ending which is all of the last page from about uh, 164 right through to the end uh, you've got the uh, very fast rapid ascending and descending um, arpeggios um, and then the chromatics through 189 through to uh, about 200 so there's some there's um, difficulties um, galore in this piece and an additional difficulty is uh, getting it together with the piano part because in the beginning um, it's fairly straightforward but uh, from bar nine you're faced with um, two differing um, rhythmic structures in the piano um, in the uh, in the left hand you've got very wishy-washy triplets um, and they're not even clear triplets because uh, there's a lots of, there's lots of ties. So mm, ba dum ba dum ba dum. The one you want to be listening to is the right hand, which is in quavers. Yum, bum, 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 bum. And that's the one that you've got to listen for. Now at the beginning you need uh, a very nice open G, um, the B flat I use as the covered fingering which is 4-4 um, four, four and the C key, makes a big difference. So. And you can practice the B to C for hours to try and get that, uh, the thing is, is not to bite at all, just let it come out. And you've got to imagine that the C continues over into the into the next empty bar in order to get it. Um, and of course, this is dead in time too. So you've got the piano going yum bum bum ba da dum. So dum bum bum ba dum. that did in time, if it, was, if it was dead in time, I, um, I hold the G just a little bit longer to make the demi semis that just a little bit quicker so that you can really blossom on the A flat. Notice that I've covered the A flat because that can tend to be sharp. Uh, one, two, three is what I'm using, um, and then to the covered fingering B flat. So, and 
make sure that the crescendo goes to an immediate pianissimo. Again, hold that E flat as well. Um, there is a little bit of a um, sort of writ, well, it's not a writ, it's more of um, a uh, ritardando, but absolutely die to nothing. Uh, and this way, you've got the ya dum ba dum ba dum in the, in the left hand, bom 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 bom. When I first did this, I had no idea, and then I was told, listen to the, listen to the right hand. Now, this next phrase uh, at 11 um, is double P. Um, you still want to get um, a solid presence on the throat tones, but in a very wishy-washy way. Um, and covered fingerings are a must here. And also, do not breathe until the beginning of bar 15. Um, it is possible. Um, it's very possible. What I've heard sometimes is people breathe after the G. So, this is how I would play it. And then breathe. breathe here so um, we're, we're pian piano here rather than pianissimo but the top D flat, I wouldn't be any more than about a half mezzo piano. And the idea is um, to, to let it stay in a very small ball. Um, we do come up to the mezzo piano, but uh, back down again. And then there's a tiny little crescendo leading up to the B flat, and we come away again even more, down to a piano. And then the, uh, the ending B natural um, again should die, because... Uh, um, we're coming up to uh, an, an, the next section of the piece, which is a little bit quicker. So. vibrato there as well. I do a little bit of jaw vibrato. Um, and make sure it's dead in time. Ya da da ba da 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 ba da 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 ba da 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 I mean with all the ties and stuff it makes it very wishy-washy as to where the beat is, you know, but you need to keep really really tight beat especially with the piano under you 
So we come to the next section of the piece. Um, we're rolling along uh, with the poker mosso. So uh, we can allow the sound to um, come out a little bit here. Um, now the D sharp, um, the best covered fingering I've got for a D sharp is the one you use when you're coming from, say, uh, a D to an E flat, um, is uh, the is uh, three four and then four, but half hole it, half hole it like that with the um, E flat key, and you'll get a nice covered D sharp. And also, you'll have to um, refinger the B because you'll be coming from a G sharp down to a B, refinger it to the rig. Actually, no, that's fine. Um, it's in the next bit at. Um, at uh, 23, you'll have to refinger the B in order to get to the D sharp. So, and then um, we come up to a couple of arpeggios. Now, when you hit the E sharp, uh, because your F's likely to be, because that note's likely, this note is likely to be a little bit flat, I also use the banana key just on the side uh, to bring it up a bit. And keep the air support up so that you can really lightly touch those top notes. Because you don't want it too heavy. You want it as light as you can. Just lightly touch the tongue to the, to the reed. And of course the piano carries on that shing. We try that again. And a little, and a little, there is a little tenuto on the D sharp. So we're becoming more rhythmic here. So. The ensemble, um, it's a, it's a, uh, it's a gradual speeding up, so that by the time that you get to 31, the le double plus vite scherzando, you're at 100. Uh, so it's double time, really. <laughs> you want a short staccato and it's almost a little violent actually before we're back to our original tempo and very wishy-washy for this because you the piano has got to catch you at the top now I tend to breathe here and again I use that um, that same D sharp that I was using in the poco mosso um, my part actually has a recommendation that you use the A key for the top E flat. Um, I'm not convinced. I don't like it. I don't 
like it. I, I prefer to use the regular fingering, but not the, not the regular, regular fingering, but the, the fingering I was describing, because it's a little covered. <laughs> Let's try that again. This next bit's very rhythmical. Um, there's also a suggestion in my part that you use the chromatic F sharp for the D flat. And again, I don't like that. Because it doesn't have the same timbre as the other notes. Whereas if you finger it out properly, and again, we're double, double time here. And here, this is... It's actually, um, apart from the first note, um, a straight diminished seventh chord. And the best way to practice that is just slowly. And of course there's a chinuto there. And again repeats itself. Now this next bit, um, you're fiddling around with E sharps and F sharps. Again it's just a, an F sharp diminished seventh. Except you're starting on the E sharp, which is an F. Make sure it's very quick to use the side F sharp. And it helps that uh, there's a crescendo listed as well. Or they bring it down again for the next part. And there is a pushing forward in this phrase. But come back immediately. Um, and it helps that there's a crescendo there. Don't squeeze on the B, otherwise it might pop out. And of course, we're using our covered fingerings. And of course, use your side F sharp. train tracks at the key change here um, at 58. We're in uh, uh, the moderata anime, Schiazzando. Um, now the uh, the tempo pulls around here and it's on the bar line. So actually no the tempo doesn't move at all because um, the piano has got the main line. And you're just sort of um, whiffling in and out of the piano line, really. Um, make sure that you come de back up to the P because um, there is decrescendos through the last um, last beats of the bar. So, and this is uh, again very difficult, but you need to practice it slowly. to a mezzo piano here, down to, um, down to a pupi, and then back up to a mezzo piano again, and then open up a little bit here, can 
can take a little bit of time there at the beginning of that. Now I leave the C sharp down, it's too difficult otherwise, but I play the moderato anime. So. disgusting little one this at 69 going C sharp to D sharp D sharp to E sharp E sharp to F sharp F sharp to G sharp and G sharp to A sharp I use the side F sharp and of course you're dying to nothing here just got to practice it slowly I'm afraid and then at 70. bit I probably made it sound disgustingly easy and it's not is um, um, I've got it marked in my part as MF although my teachers scrub that out and mark that as a P multi dim um, I tend to extend the crescendo roundabout till 75 and then come way massively um, into the dub into the pianissimo now the E sharp I use as an overblown lower D can be a bit problematic. You can use the normal um, F fingering. I don't like it. I think that the overblown D has more of a ring. support here don't let your support down for a millisecond now this um, just at uh, 78 and 79 build as much as you can before dying away completely very quickly at 80 even slower here and I will allow you on that C sharp to finger an F sharp um, overblown F sharp and so that's the end of the uh, the wishy-washy section we're now into the more rhythmic section um, remembering your A sharps and D sharps and everything else <laughs> So as short on that staccato as you can. Now this is the rhythmic section and we're coming up to some left, some really uh, cluey left hand work uh, going from B flats to F's to A flats to D's. So um, the piano starts us off here. Again, crescendo, then to, then to a P. 
and uh, bouncy boppy full staccato not not spitting <laughs> your support down for an instant here keep the support constant um, you're, you're only touching the tongue to the reed thing is slow practice and um, use of the use of the thumb too because it, it is easy just to leave that thumb on for the for the B flat and it won't work you really need to lift the thumb so that it's nowhere near the F key um, when you're on the B flat So yeah, that's all. That, that's what I've been doing. Just slow practice. Just make sure that the um, the thumb isn't anywhere near the um, the F hole. Um, and notice there's uh, at one eighteen there is a little uh, tenuto on the G. So. Then die away to nothing um, with the decrescendo. Now, uh, at the R tempo at 124, um, you want uh, a really warm sound um, because you're with the piano here. Because actually, at 124, the main the main um, tune is with the piano. Yum bum 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 bum. Um, before we take it over at uh, 130, but um, all through this. <laughs> so it's got to be dead in time, but you you're. you're you, you've got to make sound make it sound like you're it's it's completely free even though it's a very definite uh, rhythmic structure and you you're with the piano here at 132 Again, here you need to sound like it's there's no rhythmic structure, whatever. But uh, you are actually and delicate, delicate more, um, very delicate. You're only barely grazing the reed with your tongue. Now this is uh, from 150 right through to 155. Um, you can't breathe at all. Um, so the the tech the big uh, the technique is to take a huge breath at 150 and uh, really 
make sure there's a solid column of air behind it. Um, it needs to sound like it's floating on clouds. Um, even though you're working dreadfully hard and of course all your covered fingerings come into play here. Notice that I'm signalling for the piano to come in. So, because uh, the piano needs your help there, um, and that's probably another thing that uh, we need to um, contend within a piece like this is uh, signalling when you want the piano to come in. And then, uh, but after, so one, so you've uh, just taken your big, <laughs> now I do finger out the normal F sharp here. But I have the banana key down because it is a flat note. And I do play the normal E flat too. And we're getting faster here in um, preparation for the anime. best way to practice this again is to uh, get the metronome um, you know take it back to um, take it back to 60 if you need to um, I'll take it I usually start it at 80 now there is a trick use the leave the um, C sharp down for the D sharp trill sorry for the um, D flat to E flat trill Um, be very rhythmical here. Now I'll show you a little uh, trick in the next bit. Is that rather than um, finger out the D flat um, from the B, just finger a F natural like we did before, but keep the B flat key down. That'll bring it up so that. That's the, that's the best way to practice that passage really, so, is to take it slow. got our run to the end again you want a uh, very very light boppy staccato So for the B flat trill, I, I just lift these two fingers. I know the C is going to be a bit sharp, but I fur. Because it's not the same timbre. You want note of the same timbre. And 
and make sure you hit the side F sharp. Now, the best way to practice from 189 through to 196 is just slowly and over and over and over again. So you can play it in your sleep. And then you need to use the left, uh, the left hand C at 193. Now here at the end, um, in my part it's written as D sharp to E, D natural, E flat, G. Apparently that's incorrect. It's actually so D sharp, E natural, G. on the piano's last chord and again to get that um, it's simply a uh, yeah it's just a D major um, scale up the top um, E flat and really meaty. And and let the piano know when to come into those final chords. So um that's the Debussy Premier Rhapsody. Um so there's lots of stuff to be practicing. I recommend a lot of slow practice for the technical stuff. Um, and lots of long tone exercises um, and abato exercises for the very long phrases. Uh, make sure that your left hand um, work is clean because uh, even though the piece is meant to sound wishy-washy we don't want the technique to be wishy-washy. Um, and know when you can take time and when you can't. Um, I recommend you study the piano line and uh, work very closely with your accompanist on this one. I know I did. Um, make sure you've got your covered finger rings down pat um, and practice lots of long tones especially in the altissimo so that you can get those pianissimos um, down pat so that's um, my take on the Premier Rhapsody um, any further questions please direct them to my channel